The best electric can opener. If you're looking for the best electric can opener, here's a collection you've got to see. Don't lecture me, you can opener. Frozen bodies, slicing a man in half, and one of the most unfair knife versus samurai sword fights I've ever seen. <laughs> I see you've plied knifey spoony before. We have the second last episode of season three with still many unanswered questions and theories to discuss. So stick around as we take a deep dive into the episode and explain what was in Musashi's briefcase, the fate of Bernard and Stubbs, and what's next for Caleb. We begin with a Rehoboam circle picking up a divergence in Jakarta, Indonesia. Remember after the death of Maeve in the distillery that Sorak was able to determine where the Dolores copies were located with one of them being in in Jakarta. This one was Musashi. Bonus points if you were able to recognize the Hindu god in the background here. In Hinduism, gods with many arms are able to perform multiple tasks at a time, just like how Dolores is able to do the same with her copies. Musashi hands over a briefcase to be delivered to a quote, friend, leading me to believe that what's inside is going to the final Dolores copy in Berlin that we haven't seen yet. Musashi receives a call from Charlotte. She's masked in shadow here, but you can slightly make out part of her charred skin on the side. So either she has the world's best makeup artist or has gotten some medical help. We've seen these devices heal up wounds, so that may have played a part. Charlotte tells Musashi that Dolores' plan involves all of them to die, so she's gone ahead and leaked his location to either Maeve or Serac since they control Clementine and Hanario, the two resurrected hosts built to aid Maeve in her battle against Dolores. Notice how these two make off with Musashi's head, like so they can retrieve Dolores' pearl for further interrogation, something that was cut short last episode. Caleb's arc deals with him coming to terms with the reality of his past. We see a woman here known as Dr. Green treating Caleb with augmented reality therapy, the same therapy William was treated with last episode. We get flashes of him by the ocean where he'll supposedly commit suicide, him going through a forest, shooting what appears to be a terrorist in a US town, and in Crimea with Francis before we're treated to another divergence in Sonora, Mexico, the place that was the inspiration for Westworld. Caleb and Dolores travel on horseback with Dolores carrying the duffel bag delivered to them at the end of episode 5. She lies to Caleb about the purpose of her revolution, noting that her people are extinct, yet she has barrels of that white host goop and Charlotte having apparently uploaded all the host data to her. She theoretically has the material to rebuild her race, but is set up Caleb here. As Bernard says about Caleb near the end, Dolores was made with a poetic sensibility. She won't destroy humanity. He will. Caleb is merely a pawn, hence why the name of this episode is Past Pawn. Back at the re-education facility, William learns that Stubbs is a host and that his blood was infected with what Bernard calls a virus of sorts. This virus was what Charlotte injected him with in order to find out the location of the Sonora re-education facility, the one where we'll meet the predecessor to Rehoboam, Solomon. Bernard also tells him that they have him down as deceased, likely because William was set to be transferred to the Sonora facility to be put on ice. We learn a little more about Caleb's time in the military. He worked in a unit that tracked Russian insurgents. Technology has improved so much that these glasses can see specially marked targets which a satellite can use to deploy missiles with insane accuracy. Now it just might be me, but these missiles look a lot like the arrows found in the intro credits and on Nathan's bedsheets. Caleb recounts the story of him and Francis capturing the leader of the Russian insurgency. We'll later find out this is all a lie, a reprogrammed memory. Dolores sets up a sniper rifle from the duffel bag. It contains a drone that is able to map out and locate all of the security personnel, allowing Dolores to make quick work of them from a great distance. As we enter inside, we can see it is the same re-education center Dempsey Sr. visited Serac in in episode 5. Dolores tells Caleb they're here to see Solomon, a scrapped predecessor to Rehoboam who had developed serious anomalies, likely because its programmers, Serac's brother Jean Mi, was schizophrenic. Some of that insanity had manifested in its AI. We also see a robot here, the same kind that Maeve commandeered when she tried to escape Serac's lab. Solomon knows that Caleb is U-Class, a class designated for the hopeless cases. William was designated U-Class as well as his therapist we saw last episode. Solomon was designed to create this new world order, but it was also designed with a failsafe, an EMP, electromagnetic pulse 
pulse that, if triggered, would destroy it. This is what Dolores uses at the end of the episode. She notes that she's not that different than Solomon. Hosts were also built with a failsafe by their creators, as she touches the back of her spine where explosives were put in all the hosts. Bernard learns more about Serac's plan. He saw that humans couldn't save them from themselves, so he tried to reprogram them just like hosts. But in order to do that, he'd need high-grade biometric data, data which William sold to him. Bernard chastises William over this, and he responds, Stop acting like a savior, Bernard. You're not Arnold. Which I think is a really interesting thing to say, considering Bernard is the only one with a partly red pearl, meaning he is part host, part human data. And the dominant theory out there is that human part is Arnold. We get a glimpse of the fake memory Caleb was instilled with, that his partner Francis was ambushed and Caleb ended up killing the attackers. We can tell the fake memory from the real memory when we put these images side by side. The left is the fake memory with Cyrillic signage, and the right the real memory with English. Caleb and Dolores venture deeper into the facility, stumbling across a hologram of Serac. This dude really loves holograms. This is a program message meant for Jean-Mi. His brother was put on ice until Serac could find a way to reprogram and cure these outliers. As Solomon said earlier, the therapy success rate was only 1 in 10, hence why so many people who weren't successful were cryogenically frozen. Kind of like how hosts who acted up were put into storage. This makes it clear why Serac wants Dolores. She has the encryption key to that high-grade biometric data that can save his brother's life, not to mention countless others. Solomon tries to justify Serac's decision by stating that since putting these outliers on ice, crime and hunger have plummeted. Serac's vision of the world is based on the principle of utilitarianism, the greatest amount of good for the greatest amount of people, even if that means having to ice, reprogram or kill millions of others. We can see Jean-Mi has been given a prominent ice to here in the facility. The circle surrounding him is quite reminiscent of the circle that surrounds hosts as they're being made. Caleb here learns his true past. He was an outliner tasked with hunting down other outliers. This was facilitated through the RICO app, which he and his partner Francis would use to commit their crimes. When taking out this man, known as Whitman, they put on these masks containing many eyes, just like how the system that controls them sees everything. Whitman used to work for a pharmaceutical company that made these limbs pills. He knows about the Sonora facility and tells them his crime was asking too many questions, hence why he needs to be taken away for his cold nap. Maeve arrives just before Dolores tells Solomon to give Caleb what she calls the final strategy, the plan Jean-Mi asked Solomon to make right before Serac put him on ice. That plan, however, was made 15 years ago and much has changed, so Dolores goes off to fight Maeve while Solomon takes time to recalibrate this plan to fit the new world. World. As Dolores prepares to fight Maeve, they have a little back and forth, and Maeve takes this moment to control one of Serac's bots and stab her. The odds are really stacked against Dolores here. While she gets a dinky knife and sniper rifle, Maeve gets his samurai sword and frickin' quadcopter. Meanwhile, William tells Bernard and Stubbs that he's going to wipe every host from Earth, beginning with the two of them. They'd better kill him now, or he'll kill them later. Something he appears to fully live up to at the end of the episode. In Caleb's memory, we learn what really happened happened. While Francis goes to make a round, Whitman tells him how the system works. It's always listening. Rico will offer them some extra cash to kill the other partner, and seeing how Caleb didn't get one, it's probably him on the chopping block. Is Whitman telling the truth, or are these just mind games? Caleb later confronts Francis, asking him how much he was offered to kill him, to which he responds, enough. Francis goes to shoot, but Caleb ends up taking him down. He's so distraught over what he just did that when Whitman tells him he just became a very rich man, he kills him too. Caleb is justifiably mad at Solomon. After all, it was through his control that he ended up murdering his best friend. Lucky for him, however, Dolores' new strategy for revolution is ready. Maeve and Dolores continue to fight, but Dolores gets her arm blown off by the quadcopter. She rushes back to Solomon with Maeve in pursuit, telling her she's died many times, but this will be her last. She also has a great line about how Dolores has turned a young man and unleashed his inner darkness before, a reference 
reference to William. But before Maeve can kill Dolores once and for all, Dolores hits the EMP which fries them all. Now I hope there's a backup generator or all these bodies are gonna thaw pretty fast. But don't fret, several of the previews and season trailers show another major confrontation between Maeve and Dolores, so these two will be making another appearance in the finale. In our second last scene, bonus points for those who noticed the lab to slab sign in the background, an ad for the kind of factory made meat like the one Bernard worked at in episode 1. This gas station here no longer sells fossil fuels, the future is electric. You can even see the charging stations in the background. Bernard and Stubbs make the mistake of letting William go on his own in the station where he finds a shotgun. Bernard tells Stubbs that if they can find Caleb, maybe they can stop Dolores, and Bernard shows Stubbs Caleb's registration number, which is the exact same number as William. This could mean that Caleb's data was tampered with. In an earlier scene, we see Stubbs tinkering around the computer in the background. I've theorized that Stubbs is Serac's second mole, so it's possible he has done something here to tamper with the data. Ultimately, William ends up holding these two at gunpoint, and in the preview, we do see him fire it, but at who, we don't know. We do know that Stubbs has been programmed to protect Bernard, so I wouldn't be surprised if he sacrifices himself. His character has pretty much been a glorified bodyguard this season with not much to do, so I wouldn't be surprised if he kicks the bucket in this final episode. Finally, we see Caleb come across Dolores' deactivated body. He'll be the one to put her together again, and he gets a call from Dolores' virtual assistant who says he has instructions for him. These instructions likely have something to do with this exoskeleton here, and perhaps that Dolores clone in Berlin that we haven't encountered yet. But I want to know your thoughts and theories in the comments below. Thanks for watching everyone, please make sure to like and subscribe, and check out my other videos and Westworld breakdowns. You can also follow me on Twitter at ThinkStoryYT. Until next time, remember, Daddy loves you very much.